Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your host for the Virtual Being Summit and founder of Fable, Edward Sachi. And I'm very fortunate to have a co-host over here. Sam, I don't know if you want to come just quickly to say hi as well. He's probably not mic'd up, but no, I'm not mic'd up, just to but... wave, just to wave meaningfully at the crowd. So we host a fantastic event in San Francisco, and uh, now we're, we're hosting in Hollywood. And I'm going to get started by showing you a video to explain a little bit about what a virtual being is uh, and what it could be. Five years ago, when we were starting Story Studio, we would tell anyone who would listen that virtual reality was an art form. Today, in every film festival in the world, Sundance, Tribeca, Cannes, Venice, um, virtual reality is showcased as true art. As we keep exploring, as we keep moving through, the next great art form isn't virtual reality. The next great art form is artificial intelligence. One of the things I look for as an investor is a shift in human behavior. People are starting to interact with virtual beings on Instagram. They're going to concerts with holograms. The world of entertainment is going to just flourish because of this, and we're just moments away from it. We are asking more from our audiences than we've ever asked before. You get to have a conversation with Lucy, our virtual being. We are expanding upon Lucy's senses, her voice, her hearing. Computer vision to give the character eyes, natural language processing so that the character can speak to us. We are really asking audiences to open up, to use their voice, to have a conversation with the character, which is this whole new amazing realm. When you are interacting with Lucy and you're telling Lucy things, Lucy's going to remember. Lucy says, hey, Cyan, how are you doing? What's been up since the last time we saw each other? What? <laughs> I mean, that's, uh, that's some futuristic, amazing, and we're now. It's not the future, it's now. Right now, we've got two completely siloed communities with artificial intelligence going to New Europe's, with the filmmakers and virtual reality storytellers going to Sundance. We need to come together and to share ideas and to create new work. Technology and storytelling are always going to be paired. Whether you go back to the cave and you use shadows from a fire, the first piece of technology, or you're talking about machine learning and voice processing and all of these things that are giving us the ability to do these magic tricks. If you're working on machine learning, you might want to explore storytelling because it may not be obvious. You could be you know, at the forefront of a movement. Almost $100 million has been invested into the space. Arty, Super Plastic, AI Foundation. Little Michaela, Micah with Magic Leap, Lucy's Fable. Basically a revolutionary change in how we consume entertainment. There's a whole community growing up that makes together machine learning engineers, immersive storytellers, of novelists, of neural network designers. And so that's what makes it so exciting to be on the ground floor watching this stuff happen right now. That's going to be the team that comes together to create these ongoing virtual beings. So very kindly, I have, as I did at San Francisco, a therapy rose to build the confidence of the speakers. It certainly is building my confidence. Doug will be next, um, and hopefully it'll help many of the speakers today. Um, so the trend already is being recognized. Um, New York Times, Washington Post, talking about virtual beings, virtual influencers, digital humans, and we're right at the very beginning of it. Um, I'm the co-founder of uh, Oculus Story Studio, which was a virtual reality movie studio, now Fable, a virtual being startup. And I hosted with all of my friends and, and colleagues the San Francisco Summit. And there we were able to bring together um, folks from Facebook, Google, Epic, Fortnite, Arty, folks from all over the map. And um, I think when you take a look at the landscape, it breaks down into these categories. And I'm sure that some might object and think there are others, but I think this is a little bit of a, a beginning. So deep fake celebrities, 
Deepfake is a very controversial word. Most of the people behind this, behind these projects wouldn't want that word there, but essentially using artificial intelligence to make us feel as though a celebrity is reacting um, in real time. Um, virtual friends, that's what I do with my co-founder Pete at, and, and Jess at Fable, um, as do many other groups and companies. Um, we have IP characters brought to life, becoming more real time, whether that's Darth Vader, Invader Immortal, which you're going to hear about um, in a little while. Music, fashion, virtual influencers. A lot of the folks in this room know about Michaela, know about um, the revolution on Instagram of following a character for a long period of time. And more recently, we're starting to see virtual immortality. So whether that's James Dean coming back to life in a movie, which you'll hear about a little bit later today, or something more personal. Um, and if you want to see content from the previous summit or from this summit, it's all um, going to be online. We announced Virtual Being Grants at the previous summit. We have six winners, which you'll be able to learn about um, online from the first class uh, of Virtual Beings Grants. And next, we're going to have a Virtual Beings Investor Day. Um, so we've had a lot of interest in folks wanting to, in a private setting, see demos have a sort of exposition and understand. Obviously, today, we're not going to be able to see demonstrations. But we wanted to bring together startups and investors to start powering this community even more. Now, I'm going to tell you a little bit of a story. Um, so in 2012, something started happening in Silicon Valley. People left the devices that we use every day, smartphones, televisions, laptops, and were very inspired to go and work on the devices of tomorrow virtual reality and augmented reality. And I, I was one of those people. And the only issue is that it appears this is going to take a very, 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 very long time to come to fruition. Um, and having worked on it for five years, I, I think that's pretty true. It's going to take a very long time. For our behavior to be changed to that extent, it's going to take a long time. And a lot of folks, brilliant folks apparently, um, are returning to the devices that the many use. There are no VR, I don't think there are any VR headsets. Nobody's wearing AR glasses in this audience. It's a very tech forward audience. We're all still using laptops, tablets, iPhones. We're all still watching TV, or many of us are. And they haven't changed very much in the last seven years. The smartphone sales have plateaued. There hasn't been that wild innovation in the categories of the products that we actually use, that the many actually use today. And so what I hope is that my friends who worked tirelessly to bring VR and AR to everyone and now see that it will take a little bit longer and want to be useful today for the many can actually start revolutionizing the devices that they left behind and bringing something completely new. I think it starts with AI and machine learning and ACI. So in the past, machine learning was very siloed. So image recognition team over here, facial ID team over here, NLP team over here. And recently, there's a new movement which has been called ACI, Artificial Coherent Intelligence, bringing these different platforms together so that multimodal learning agents can power the IP characters of tomorrow, as you saw a little bit of and you'll see a lot more of today. Ours at Fable are the wolves, um, so the characters and wolves in the walls. Um, but the particular character doesn't matter. Imagine a future where instead of subscribing to Netflix or to our favorite shows, we subscribe to characters. We wanted to know what was happening next. Imagine if those characters, like virtual assistants, could open applications for us where we could learn, we could do Duolingo with them, we could watch movies with them, play games with them, um, cook with them, listen to music with them, um, and also follow their lives on Facebook and Instagram um, and YouTube. We could have a virtual being helping us cook. We could have a virtual being helping us paint and actually creating paintings themselves, playing video games, homework. And this could be any character. This could be your favorite character um, and any universe of characters. And I think people are ready for something completely new. I think there's a reason that smartphone sales have plateaued, but nothing has replaced it. There isn't a great outcry for Snapchat spectacles number three. Um, people still are very attached to screens. So I think this could be a revolutionary way for us to connect to content.
completely differently. Um, so eventually that could even be the way in which we interact with all applications. So we wouldn't say iOS is afraid to go to school today, but we might say Lucy is afraid to go to school today. And they could eventually serve similar functions in our lives. So imagine that, a total revolution without anybody having to change the devices that they're using today. So what's next? The Virtual Beings Invest Today in San Francisco. Today, I've broken it up into three uh, core categories to help digest. There's a lot of information. Uh, there's a lot of different startups. Um, folks are speaking for about seven to eight minutes, uh, mostly. And the first is virtual games in Hollywood. The second is virtual friends and family. And the last is virtual avatars and deepfakes. I came up with these names. I hope if any of the startups feel they were misattributed, they will forgive me. But I was trying to, to create something that would be digestible for this audience. I also want to say a special thank you to the people largely responsible for this, which isn't me. It's Heather and Elizabeth. I don't know if they are visible, but I'd love to give a round of applause to them. Uh, maybe they're working, working away. Um, so enjoy this, this moment, to quote an old friend from VR. These are the good old days of virtual beings. Um, it's just, oh my god, I've run out of time. <laughs> um, so first up today, we have virtual games and Hollywood as a core category. And our first speaker, I believe, is Doug Robel, the wonderful Doug Robel.